Hey, it's Greg Lamb here, bringing you your cloud accounting news, reviews, and how-tos. In my first Bitcoin 101 for Small Business video, I showed you how to acquire some Bitcoins using an exchange. I also showed you how to transact a bit more safely online by using two-factor authentication. In this video, I'll show you how to set up web and mobile Bitcoin wallets, and then show you how fast and easy it is to send Bitcoin. Let's get your online Bitcoin wallet. To learn how to send Bitcoin, an easy place to start online is with a web wallet. We'll use blockchain.info in this example. I chose to use blockchain.info because it's easy to set up and they also have support for mobile apps on iOS and Android. However, security wise, it's not the most secure Bitcoin wallet out there, so don't take this as an endorsement and store thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin there. I'll talk more about security in another part of the series, but for testing $10 worth of Bitcoins, Blockchain.info is fine. So we'll go to Blockchain.info to set up an account and get a wallet. Something that you'll immediately notice is that you don't require an email to set up an account. Whether you use an email address is up to you. Something else important to note is that if you lose your password, there is no way to get it back, even if you set up an email address. So make sure your password is extra safe. And just to make sure that you don't lose the money in your wallet, blockchain.info gives you a mnemonic, I hope I pronounced that right, to write down in case you somehow forget or lose your password. After you write down the mnemonic, you will be taken to a login screen with your identifier filled out. It's very important to write down this identifier because this is your username that you need to use to log in. So if you didn't provide an email address when signing up, there is also no way for you to know what your identifier is. As a safety precaution, to confirm that you actually know your identifier and password, blockchain.info makes you log in. So we'll go ahead and enter our credentials and then click on Open Wallet. You'll then see your wallet. Yay! You now have an online Bitcoin wallet as well as a Bitcoin address. With that address, anyone can send you Bitcoin. Now what we'll do with blockchain.info is make it a bit more secure by using two-factor authentication, which you can set up by going to Account Settings. From there, you'll want to click on Security. And then you can choose to set up two-factor authentication. Select Google Authenticator. This will provide you with a QR code that you can scan in using your Google Authenticator app on your smartphone. So whip out your smartphone, fire up the Google Authenticator app, and scan in the QR code. I don't know what the interface is like with iOS, but with Android, it's not super apparent how to scan a code. In case you're confused, you have to tap on the Android phone's menu button so that you'll see the setup account option. After that, you choose the scan barcode option and scan the barcode shown on your computer screen. You will then see your authentication code. We'll enter it into the blockchain.info website. We've successfully set up two-factor authentication on blockchain.info, making the funds you put there all the more secure. Now it's time to send some bitcoins. I should note that there is a blockchain.info Google Chrome app that you can download and use. This is more secure than using the web app, since if a hacker modified the blockchain.info website, this would not affect your local Chrome app. So if you use Google Chrome, I'd recommend using the Google Chrome app. Sending and receiving bitcoin. If you go to your blockchain.info wallet, you'll see your Bitcoin address, both in the form of a QR code and a string of characters and digits. I'll copy that code and go to circle and click on send money. All I need to do is paste the Bitcoin address, enter in an amount and press continue. Because I have Google Authenticator set up, it also asks me for my authentication code. This is good protection to make sure that even if someone found my laptop and I was logged into Circle, they can't spend my funds unless they also have my phone. Once you send the money, you'll see the transaction appear in your account transaction list. This transaction is sent near instantly and it's only a second or two before I hear the beep from blockchain.info indicating that I've received funds. If I go to blockchain.info and then go to my transactions, I can see the transaction from Circle. So the transaction went through However, because minor computers need to officially add the transaction to the blockchain, which is the public ledger where all Bitcoin transactions are kept, it says unconfirmed. Confirmations happen on average every 10 minutes. Since the Bitcoin was sent from Circle, it was free to send. However, if we send from the blockchain.info wallet to Circle, there is a small fee of 0.0001 Bitcoin, 
or about 4 cents in US currency. Let's try to send 50 cents in US currency worth of Bitcoin back to our Circle Bitcoin wallet. To do that, I need my Circle address. So in Circle, I go to my profile and click on Get Address. All I need to do is copy the address. And if I go back to blockchain.info and click on Send Money, I can paste the Bitcoin address in and enter the dollar or Bitcoin amount to send. Once I send the money, I'll hear a beep, but I won't see anything else on the screen confirming I've sent it. However, if I go to the Mine Transactions page in blockchain.info, I'll see it. If I click on the transaction, I'll see some more details. There is something I want you to notice. If you look at the transaction value in US dollars, it's not exactly 50 cents. This is because of the transaction fee. You'll notice it's 0.0001 Bitcoin, which again is around 4 cents in US currency. So it's not immediately apparent that you're paying a transaction fee when using blockchain.info to send Bitcoin. However, if we go to send some more Bitcoins, we can see the transaction fee if we use the custom transaction type. Here you can see that there's an option to set the miner's fee, which is also known as the transaction fee. A miner's fee is what is paid to the computer that adds the transaction to the blockchain. Most transactions will probably still go through if a miner's fee is not paid. But if you want to make sure your transaction goes through quickly and that you reward the computer's processing the transactions, paying the small fee does the trick. To recap, it's free to send Bitcoin, but it's best practice to pay a small miner's fee with the consensus defaulting to 0.0001 Bitcoin. Let's now go to Circle to see the receiving part of the transaction. We see a transaction that is receiving around 50 cents from an external account. It says receiving because it's waiting for confirmations before it says received. What you also might notice is that the amount might not be the exact amount you sent. This is either because Bitcoin has changed in value from the time it was sent from the time it was received, or perhaps more likely, the exchange rate on Circle is using a slightly different one from the one on blockchain.info. Since there is no official exchange rate for Bitcoin, it is a decentralized payment network and currency after all, every exchange will have slightly different rates. Now that you have everything set up, all you need to do to send Bitcoins is enter in an address, put in the amount of Bitcoins or local currency you want to send, and fire it off. It's no more difficult than sending an email. While using Bitcoin from a web app is handy, even handier is the ability to send and receive Bitcoin from your smartphone. I'll show you how to set up the blockchain.info Android wallet. Once you've installed the app on your Android smartphone, it'll ask you to open a new wallet or to connect to an existing wallet. Since we have an existing wallet, we'll choose that. You'll have the option to scan pairing code or pair device manually. Since we have the blockchain.info web app open, we'll choose to scan pairing code. Once we tap on scan pairing code, it turns on the camera and is looking for a QR code to scan. This means we have to go to the web app and get that code displayed. To do that, we go to account settings. After that, we go to devices and choose to show or hide pairing code. Once you scan the pairing code with your smartphone, you'll be prompted to create a four digit pin. And that's it. You have the mobile app set up. I'm eager to use it, but I realize there's only half a dollar left in the wallet. So let's put some more money into it. So we'll actually go back to the blockchain.info web app and go to the wallet home to find the Bitcoin address. We'll copy that address, then go to the send money tab in circle and paste the Bitcoin address in. I'll transfer over five more US dollars and click on send. My blockchain.info Android app immediately receives the funds. To send some Bitcoin back to my Circle wallet is even easier. In Circle, I go to the Request Money tab, select Create an Address and QR Code, and enter in a dollar amount. I'll send one US dollar. When I click on Send Request, a QR code is shown. Then from the Blockchain.info mobile app, I tap on the camera slash QR code icon. When it scans the code, it automatically populates the transaction fields with the right address and dollar amount. All I need to do is tap on send to send the payment. If I go to my account tab in circle, I see the transaction. Okay, so I hope that you now have a few transactions under your belt and that you're starting to feel more comfortable with using Bitcoin. I recommend trying out some more transactions. 
Feel free to set up another blockchain.info wallet. You can set up as many as you like. There's no limit. You can also go to bitcoin.org slash en slash choose dash your dash wallet to choose another wallet to set up and use. I'll finish up this second video in the Bitcoin 101 for Small Business series. In the next video, I'll talk about security, since with Bitcoin, you're essentially your own bank. This is Greg Lamb, aka the Small Biz Doer with the Sleater Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.